how did you and Remy hook up? Uh, me and my wife, I met, I met her actually through K Slay. Um, basically, when we started rocking, he hit me up one day. He was like, "Yo, Remy want to do a song with you," because you know she was she was doing her thing way before me. And I was like, "Oh, word!" I was a new artist at the time. You know what I mean? And um, he was like, "Yo, I think she like you, man." I said, "Word." He said, "Yeah." He said, "I'm gonna tell you." You know, that's my little sister, man. I'm letting you know she, she crazy. So if you're going to fuck with her, man, make sure you be serious <laughs> about it. I said, yo. I said, all right. But it was it was strange that he gave me that call because one time I had seen her on the DVD and I was like, damn, you know. And this one, I, was, uh, I wasn't even known in music. I wasn't even in the industry yet. I, I told my uncle, I said, yo, one day, man, I'm going to have her. You know what I'm saying? And when Slade gave me that call, I came to the studio. She never showed up. I said, damn. So um, another time we was there just working and she actually popped up on this particular day. And, you know, she came in the studio. She's screaming on Slade, yo, turn that shit down. Like, wailing on anybody in the studio. And I'm like, damn, I ain't never seen nobody talk to Slay like this, man. I like this girl, man. She got a lot of heart. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... They got that big brother, little sister relationship. So, you know, that's how they interact. But she was just thorough, man. The way she handled herself. And I was like, damn. And, um, you know, we did the track together. And we, do, we was just friends. You know what I mean? We would spend a lot of time just chopping it up, building. And she was actually schooling me on the music business because she was in the game before me. So she was telling me, like, yo, you know, I, I see you a little rough, rough around the edges. You know what I mean? You and your crew, but I'm letting y'all know, don't come in this industry with that shit. You know, a lot of these dudes, they don't live what they rap about. If you come in here and you put fear in them, they're going to blackball you. They're going to hate on you. You know what I mean? And I ain't listen to that shit. And, um, you know, our relationship, it just grew over time, man. And here we are, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, you did something that most dudes don't do. You held her down for eight years while she was gone. Yeah, um, man. That's big. Yeah, 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 man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. You know, most uh, most people don't, you know, they don't hold them down for a week. Nah, they don't, man. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> nah, man. I, I know I know you know, man. And, and you know what's crazy about that is I was always taught by the older dudes growing up, like, yo, you know, um, you know, when bitches ain't shit, you know what I mean? If you ever get locked up, they're going to leave you. They ain't going to hold you down. And it was very strange to me because when I go to, to the male facility to visit my homies, the, the prison, the visiting floor is crowded with females. Even when it's snow outside, they pushing strollers up there. They all holding the dudes down. But when right. I was going to visit my wife in the women facility, the visiting floor is empty. Nobody is visiting them. You know what I mean? And she was in a maximum facility full of women, but nobody was holding them down. Just like me and maybe two other dudes who was coming to see their lady. You know what I mean? You might see a grandmother here and there, but no dudes was holding the, the women down. So that brought me to the to the conclusion that these some of these dudes are the real bitches. You know what I'm saying? Because they leaving these women for dead in there. Hmm. That's 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 something there, definitely. <clears throat> now, uh, y'all was on Love and Hip Hop too. Uh, what was it like having cameras following you everywhere you go and in all your personal life? Mm -hmm. You know, just every time you turn around, you got a camera in your face. Yeah. Uh, at first, I didn't want to do Love and Hip Hop because it, the, the show had a bad reputation. But um, we came to the conclusion that, you know, why not try it out? You know what I mean? We ain't going to be on there doing no foolishness or, or, you know, just playing no games. And um, it took some getting used to, to be honest with you. It took a lot of getting used to at first. But, um, you know, like I said, we ain't go up there doing the hoopla, man. You know, people throw drinks on each other. They just do a lot of craziness. We, we went up there and we was just being ourselves. And it was crazy that the world the world enjoyed it and they loved it. Because usually on that show, before we came on, you really didn't see black love. You know what I yeah. mean? So Real I thought, talk. Uh, yeah, I think it was oversaturated with the negativity. You know what I mean? And when we filmed the show, I was expecting to get clowned for that shit. I was like, oh, man, they're going to kill me when this show come out, man. Because I knew the world had never seen that side of me. You know what I mean? The, the family side. I was proposing on one knee, you know what I mean? Just the, the just showing that fatherly figure. And um, actually, when the first episode aired, I got nothing but love from the people. You know what I mean? So that show that showed me that. 
people wanted to see some black love.